Welcome to Utah's Fly Corner. I'm Johnny Utah. Today I'm going to show you how to tie my high vis parachute flying ant. Big old mouthful. I just call it my flying ant. Um, thread I'm, hook I'm using is a Daiichi 1180. I like these, they got a wide eye on them. And uh, uh, standard wire, it's not light, so you can uh, hog some uh, big fish around. Um, the thread I'm using is Uni A dot in black. So I'm gonna run my thread back. I'm gonna go past about to the barb, a little bit past. Don't go too far. Um, I'm gonna dub. You know the thing with a fur ant. This is a fur ant. Well, it's actually a synthetic ant. It's not fur. I'm using I'm using a black superfine for the dubbing. Um, you want to use just like little tiny bits, like, you make that out. That's about all you want to put on the thread at a time. And you want to, you want to really squish your fingers together and, and spin them in one direction. That's going to uh, allow you to dub tight. Now, you're going to have to dub a lot with an ant. Um, generally I'll, I'll dub a piece that's a uh, good uh, six inches long worth the thread, but since the camera's there, i got to go a lot shorter. But I wind up to about two, three wraps past the hook point. I'm going to wrap back, but not all the way back, and start coming forward again. I need some more dub. That's too much. Your tendency to um, finish the ant quicker, um, to dub it quicker, is you'll try to dub on more on the thread at a time. And... Uh, You'll get it done quicker, but you're going to find that your ant sinks pretty quick, too. Because the water will get on between the fibers, and it will cause it to sink. Now we're just going to form a tapered body to a tapered ball here. Um, so I go forward, back and forth, but each time not going forward as far, not going back as far. Form a taper. Don't worry if it starts getting lumpy-bumpy. You can smooth it out. Go a little more. I'm just trying to get that ant abdomen shape. That's about right. Then for the middle piece, you use the uh, medium black holographic tinsel. Uh, if you're going to tie a cinnamon one, you know, you use cinnamon dubbing, and then I'd like to use the uh, the pink fluorescent, uh, pink holographic in the middle. The rainbow trout really like that one. I just cut myself off a piece. I'll just catch it in on, on my side, let it roll over to the top. And just touch and turns, nice and tight. Run your thread up to about the three quarters away point. And just wind your tinsel, touch and turns. Right on up. To your thread. Catch it in. And you can snip that off. Now, to protect it, you can hit it up with uh, some varnish. But, uh, I like the, uh, you loon, I mean, uh, bug bond light. Let's put a little bit on there. And just work my way around. I got a lot on there. But just running around with the needle. Nice even coat on it. And just hit it with the torch. Torches are nice, they, they set the resin uh, really fast. Resin all the way. Alright, now I'm going to tie in the wing. The wing I use on it is Midge Crystal Flash Pearl. I'm going to take about four or five fibers. 
I'm tying a size 14, so I'll go with the four or five fibers here. Uh, as you go smaller with them, no, I just use less. So I cut it off full length off the hank. I like to double it up. I fold it over my thread and bring it on to the top. It wasn't right on top. Bring it right on to the top. Hold it back tight and wrap over it. Don't wrap all the way back because you want to keep your midsection there clear. Then you can press with your fingernail right on your thread wrap, on the back of your thread wrap, and get that to flatten out. Don't cause it to flare up. Leave it laying down like that and long. Don't cut those off. You can throw down a layer of base there. Now for the post, I like poly yarn. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, it's high vis. Um, this is uh, fluorescent orange, or optic orange as they call it. But what I did was I uh, took it from a card here, I split it. And this is one split and combed out. And what I like to do is uh, take half of that. Because I'm going to double that up again. Fold that over my thread, bring it on top. Two wraps, one in front, one in the back. And just take two around real quick, cinch them up tight. Bring your thread back to the front. I'm going to tie in the hackle. Just got a brown saddle hackle here. So off a whiting uh, genetic rooster. The red label, not a uh, Herbert. Uh, I like saddle. Saddle hackle is by far my favorite for uh, parachute flies. It's nice and stiff, and it uh, definitely keeps the fly up. I just catch that in. I'm gonna post up the poly and the hackle at the same time. When you're posting, a lot of people have trouble wrapping it. When I come around this way my thread's loose and before I bring it around this side I grab my post and then bring it around tight Then where I have to let go I let loose but you gotta quickly re-grab your post and then just work your thread up and down you just need the dub remember you want nice tight dubbing You don't want too much because you don't want this ball being as big as your other one. What we're going to do is just figure eight wrap your post. When you get down to about one more turn, leave your thread in the back. We're going to wind our parachute hackle. One turn right under the other. And hold your hackle back, and with your thread in the back there, bring your hackle to the back, and bring your thread forward, and as you bring it forward, bring your thread low to the hook eye. That way you're not trapping in any of your parachute hackles. The hackle bars. Your hackle's going to get tied off way back there. And lift everybody up, keep the thread tight. Lift everybody up, throw a bunch of anchor wraps in there, and go right into your whip finish. Pull them nice and tight, snip the thread, and you can snip your hackle out of the way. Don't cut off all your parachute posts. Then take your post material, you can split it. This is the beauty of using poly yarn. You can split it, and just pull and work it, work it around like so. Don't pull too hard or else you'll, you'll uh, actually break the thread around the post because the poly yarn is uh, pretty strong stuff. But what that will do is uh, get your hackle sitting nice and nice and uh, flush again and get it worked around even.
then you can take your wing material. I like to, well, you can cut your post. And uh, the height of your post is pretty much all up to you. What I like to do after I cut my post with the poly yarn is I just work around it real quick, cut off these guys that are flaring down. Just neatens the post up, that's all. You don't need to do this, but I like to. And then I'm going to cut the wing. Now I like to have the wing back about a hook gap from the back of the hook. So that's about right there. And that's the fly. Now, I'm going to take it out of the vise so you can see it a little bit better. Now, when the when this fly hits the water, what's what's going to happen is the fish are are going to see the body the body and they're going to see that wing because what's going to end up happening is the body of the fly is going to be snug down into the film the wing and the hackle will be sitting on the film and it'll look like a flying ant trying to uh, pretty much escape the film or has drowned in the film I've been fishing this baby on the limestone uh, spring creeks of PA um, in some pretty uh, heavily fished areas um, so those fish are extra uh, picky and selective and I've been uh, hammering them to say the least with this fly it's a great producer for me uh, tie them up in cinnamon uh, use them in black like this I've been using uh, size 12s, 14s, 16s uh, the cinnamon ones I like uh, 14s, 16s and 18s uh, with blacks, I usually stay pretty big because uh, it's supposed to represent a carpenter ant, and they're they can be pretty big. So uh, a size 14 and even a 12 is not out of the realm of a of a carpenter ant size. But it's just been a really great producer for me. So twist them up and give them a go. Uh, tip I can give you also uh, that I've uh, said before in some of my videos is uh, this stuff here, Hydrostop by Loon. You soak your flies in this and it waterproofs them completely. Everything on here will be waterproofed permanently, which that means that if your ant starts to sink, you don't need any floating. Um, if your ant starts to sink, it's just because it's dirty. Take it, take it right in the film of your fingers and roll around in your fingers. Don't worry, you won't mess it up if you tie it tight. Just roll around in your fingers a little bit, not tight of course, just gentle. And then you'll be able to uh, get that film dirt off of there or fish slime, whichever it is that's on there. Uh, causing the ant to sink, give it a couple hard false casts and she'll be flowing like new again. The Hydro Stop is excellent stuff. Def definitely uh, recommend it. Well, I'm Johnny Utah, check me out on my site www.utahsflycorner.com I got lots of tutorials on there and my other videos are on there as well as my videos are on my YouTube channel so just check them out well thank you for watching